I want you all to know that I love you very much. And I want to open this episode with that declaration of love for all of you from the heart, from deep down. Because I'm going to be talking really bad about Breath of the Wild through this whole video. And I'm the only person on the internet, it seems, at times, that had major issues with that game. We're Big Link now. We're all grown up. And at some point in this recording session, I don't know this particular video or not, but at some point while I'm recording today, we will get to probably the weakest dungeon in Ocarina of Time, which is to say still one of the, like, one of the better dungeons in Zelda as a whole. It's still in the upper 50%, uh, just because the dungeons in this game are all so fantastic. But... My main, my main feeling is that even a bad Zelda dungeon is usually pretty good. Like, I'm having a really hard time thinking of a dungeon throughout the Zelda games. I mean, like, after the puzzly elements and stuff start. I mean, obviously there's, there's dungeons in, like, the second quest of Zelda 1 that are kind of butts. But, like, I'm talking about, like, the design, overall scope and feel of a dungeon... So, like, the long, long ago, the ancient era of the Zelda ones, where every dungeon was just a single-colored collection of blocks. Oh, I didn't want to ask you how to ride horses. I know how to ride horses. There are definitely dungeons that are better than others. We're gonna go ahead and AXY, AXY. Uh, I think Twilight Princess... It has a good amount of dungeons... Let's contrast some of the some of the post Ocarina Zelda games. Wind Waker has decent dungeons, more or less, but we have to jump this fence so we get some rupees back. So let's get the fence. All right, jump it, jump it, jump it! Yeah! Did I get rupees? I didn't get rupees. You're supposed to get rupees for doing that. We need 70 rupees for this scene, but you can get five by jumping this fence. There they are. Okay. Uh. Wind Waker has decent dungeons, but the quantity... I didn't know there was a rupee over the little fence! Oh, game of the year right here. Game of the year 1984. Yeah, Wind Waker only has like five dungeons like total. It's, uh, it's just not enough dungeon content to sate my manly hunger for Zelda dungeons. Then you got Twilight Princess, which had a good number of dungeons, but many of them were just mediocre. The, uh, the Temple of Time, where I, I asked him how to ride horses again, even though he just watched me. Did he put his face on the fence? He did! My man put his face on the fence! Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Right, let's AXY AXY again. I might actually have to abandon my point so I can concentrate on this race coming up, but the idea is the last thing we did out in the overworld as little boy Link was to make friends with Epona. So when we come back as big hunka hunka man meat Link, I can ride Epona. Now we gotta beat him in two races, and if we do that, we get permanent access to Epona on the world map. Which is gonna be critical for stuff that I wanna do in this recording session. Twilight Princess... Mm. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It has one dungeon that I actually completely dislike. But the reasons that I completely dislike it are very, very nitpicky. We've got to go, like, way down the rabbit hole of, like, <laughs> of, like, the dungeon design document deep in Brick Road's mind before, before that argument makes any sense. Let's just say that my reasons for not liking the Ice Mansion dungeon with the big yeti guy who makes soup and then his wife with no arms. Let's just say that on a technical level that dungeon's fine and I'm a crazy man with unreasonable expectations. He is right on my butt. 
He is right back there on my fly swatter. Let's... Okay, we got him. Ooh, that's good, because in my test play, he actually won the second race, and then I had to go find rupees somewhere. He was trying to curry favor with Ganondorf by giving him this horse, but I tamed the wild mare as a child, and now me and her are buds. So while we're locked in here, we can just, you know, hop the wall. Epona. Epona, you're making me look bad in front of the guys now. Let's, let's come back around for another pass. Okay. Let's get the camera behind us. Do you feel like hopping a wall today, baby? Let's go. Can you do it? There we go. <laughs> so we're going to pretend like my beef with the ice dungeon in Twilight Princess is unreasonable and I'm a terrible man. Okay, so we're going to take that as a given. A lot of the other dungeons in that game are just kind of mediocre. You got the, the Temple of Time dungeon, which is cool for what it is. I mean, you get the Dominion Rod and you bounce the big statues around. That's kind of fun. There's some, there's some cool puzzles that they got out of it, but... We are going to consistently show our love for Epona by whipping her ass mercilessly for the rest of the Let's Play. So, go ahead and get your letters into PETA or whatever you gotta do. Uh, but then you've got the, the like the Sky City dungeon, and mo like let's be clear, most of the puzzly stuff in that dungeon is just find the next hookshot point, which isn't super compelling. But I mean, then you got stuff like uh, in that same game, you've got like the magnetic boots in the fire dungeon that you walk all along walls and ceilings. That's pretty rad. And you've got the water temple in Twilight Princess, which has the big, uh, like, movable stairwell slash water chute. That's an excellent puzzle mechanic. Really, really cool. So Twilight Princess kind of splits the difference. But even the mediocre dungeons in Twilight Princess are better on average than most of what action-adventure dungeons are like. I'm going to try to get this grave on the first shot. I think it's this one here with the flowers. Because this one didn't have flowers when I was here as a young, and yes, that's the correct one. So we just completed a race, and now we got to come in here and complete another race. This time it's against Dompy the Gravekeeper, and we didn't we didn't force Dompy to follow us around for an hour while he was digging up his grave. But if we had, we could call this scene sweet, sweet revenge on his behalf, because. <laughs> He's like, oh, you were the little kid who I had to follow around for hours and hours while taking a pittance of rupees off you so I could dig up a heart piece. Well, now you can follow me around this gross and ghostly underworld. That's what I imagine Dumpy's voice sounds like. Doesn't actually have voice acting in this game, so I don't know. Anyway, my point was that... I think all of the Zelda games after Ocarina have issues in their dungeon content. Majora's Mask, I'm going to go ahead and just forgive the issues in the dungeon content. That game wasn't really trying to be a mainline Zelda game. So even though it only had four dungeons in it, plus the final dungeon, which I guess kind of counts, uh, most of the content in that game, most of what made that game unique, wasn't in the dungeons. It was like in the in the time mechanics and things. So I'm going to give Majora's Mask a pass, I believe. But like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, everybody went into those games with the expectation that the star of the show was going to be the dungeons, and it didn't happen in either case. Wind Waker just didn't have enough dungeons. I think the story is that it was supposed to have more dungeons, but a couple of them got cut. Uh, and then Twilight Princess, it had a, a decent amount of dungeon content. Y R L Y R L. I got my L and R mixed up because I'm a early 1990s fan rom hack fanslation guy. Twilight Princess was phoning in a couple of the dungeons. It felt like a lot of the development of that game went into all of the little just nickel and dime quests in between dungeons. Which was not a design choice that I particularly cared for, and it's one of the reasons I'm not really enamored with Twilight Princess. I have played it twice now. Uh, I haven't played the new HD version on the Wii U. I didn't bother picking that up. 
but I've played the original Wii version a couple times, and yeah, it's just, I think I've had my fill of it. This poor guy, he's going to teach us the song that we destroyed his windmill with seven years ago. <laughs> and here is the Song of Storms. LRA! LRA! The Lightning Rod Association is the mnemonic device I'm going to use to remember LRA. Get Song of Storms, Lightning Rod, you, hear, you, you get it, you get it. I'm clever. But then we have Breath of the Wild. And I have written a 9,000 page rant about why, like on my blog, about why Breath of the Wild disappointed me. And it's because it doesn't have any dungeons in it. And people have disagreed with me on that comment. Two major points of disagreement. First, or actually three. You know what? Two major points and one kind of passable point. Uh... Let's equip some items before we go any further here. Let's put on our bombs and our hack short. Uh, we're going to want a bottle up there, and I think that one can stay empty for now. Oh, you know what? No, we're going to want a bottle in both places. We're going to have to empty those bottles before long. So the first like major point is, but the game has 120 shrines. Mm, the shrines suck. In Breath of the Wild, the shrines are terrible, just across the board. There were seven shrines in the game that I like. I didn't complete them all. I completed, I think, 86 or 87 of them. So a good chunk of the shrines, seven of them I thought were good. Seven of them I thought were worthy, like Zelda puzzly challenges. And none of those stacked up to even the smallest, worst, or most phoned-in dungeons of a Zelda game. The second thing people will say is like, oh, but you got the, the Divine Beast. Those are dungeons. They're more dungeon-like. At least they have boss fights. You know, they have several different puzzles in there. The Divine Beasts were my favorite part of... Is my buddy back here? Is my home skillet back here? Let's find out. He is? I like him. There he is. So, to get this... Because our hookshot is weak and short and stingy. We can just get him with Din's fire. Check this out. <laughs> and then to actually pick up his ado hickey. Beautiful. And I did it without falling down the Goron hole. Yeah, the Divine Beasts were my favorite part of Breath of the Wild, by far. I loved the Divine Beasts, but they were short, they were simple. I took my time with them, and I don't think I spent more than an hour in any particular Divine Beast. And I know I'm clearing the dungeons in Ocarina in much less than an hour, but keep in mind, this is my like 20th or 30th time with each of these dungeons. Did I get them? I did not. He got me instead. Uh, and I'm, I'm doing test plays on Ocarina. So when you see me do a dungeon, every recording of a dungeon you see is actually like the second time I played the dungeon that day. Is that going to be good? We got him. Hey, buddy, you were supposed to roll into my bomb. Jerk. So I don't really consider the Divine Beast dungeons either. You don't get new toys. They're super short. They're very... Like, there doesn't need to be a uh, minimum difficulty level on du on Zelda dungeons or anything. But this is kind of a high difficulty level here. Trying to get this cat to stop rolling around. We gotta, like, anticipate him is what we gotta do. Like, he's coming up now. That's too close. No, actually, that was correct. He was just on the wrong side of the, the path there. I feel like if you took the best of the shrines, like there's a shrine in Breath of the Wild. It's this. It's one of my set. One of the seven good ones. Oop, I didn't see you coming around the corner there. One of the seven good ones. It's all dealing with electricity. It's actually, one of the few shrines that has more than one puzzle in it. 
I'm gonna keep chucking bombs and we're gonna get them. <laughs> I'm gonna run out of bombs, it's gonna be so funny. Actually, I think the store down there sells bombs now, so if we do run out, we can just go downstairs and buy some. That didn't get him? Really? That was directly directly on top of him when that exploded and it didn't get him? But I feel like there's if you take that one shrine with the electricity puzzles... There we go. Finally. It's T-Boz of the Gorons! Wait, your name's T-Boz too? But my name is T-Boz! If you take that one electricity shrine that I actually really liked and combined it with the Divine Beast that is also a bunch of electricity puzzles and put an item in there and a little bit more combat, then you would have an appropriately sized Zelda dungeon. And then the third uh, point of contestment that people... was like, what about Hyrule Castle at the end of the game? When you go into Ganon's monstrous, gigantic castle, doesn't that count as a dungeon? It counts as a, a a dangerous space that you have to explore, sure. Yeah, I'll grant you that, but there's no puzzles. There's no... There's no sense of flow, it's just a big space that... You kind of explore and you f you find your own way through it. There's a bunch of different paths you can take. It's good for what it is, but it's not a Zelda dungeon. And I don't think anybody actually sees that as a Zelda dungeon. But the more and more that I saw these uh, these these protestations about my expectations about Zelda dungeon content, the more I realized like, is that what people? Th why did I jump in the lava? I wanted to have toasty feats. In fact, you know, let's see if I can get a couple hearts here. We need the hook shot. There we go. That's the stuff. Um, the more I, I thought about it, like, is this what people think Zelda dungeons are? Like, am I the one who's mistaken about why people enjoy Zelda dungeons? Because I did see that these remarks about how good the shrines were, because they were all dungeons. And, uh, the Divine Beasts and stuff, like... I'm gonna sing you the Bolero of Fire here. RL, RL, YR, YR! Excellent. Because, uh, yeah, so many people were happy with the Shrines and happy with the Divine Beasts. And I'm like, well, I guess that's it then. That's the, the vote is in. This is the best-selling, most super-hyped Zelda game in sense ocarina of time surely and everybody but me is happy with the amount of dungeon content so nintendo is going to tally up the votes and i guess that's that's all she wrote it's the moment of silence for the now dead and defunct zelda dungeon unfortunately Shoutouts to Jay Kai for sponsoring this video, and to everybody who helps make my channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.